Everyone had one point in their childhood where they dreamt that they could fly. You would jump off the bed or the back of the couch with your arms out, and sometimes you had a blanket tied around your neck as a cape, and you felt so cool. Those few moments in the air seemed to freeze, and you actually felt like you were flying. Then you would hit the ground and come back to reality. For some people, those dreams come true, and for others, they don't. But for me, I was lucky enough to have them come true this year. Hi, my name's Shannon Cooney. I'm 13 years old, and I'm in eighth grade. For my 20% time project, I chose to do something a little out of my comfort zone. My dad has been a pilot for 35 years, and I figured, why not use that to my advantage? So I asked him if he could teach me how to fly. He said yes, but of course, he had a little more planned than just flying planes. He told me that before I could actually get to even getting in a plane, I had to read two books, one called Airplane Flying Handbook and one called Aviation Weather. Exciting, right? I know, but that was only the start to my journey of becoming a pilot. Over March break, my dad and I took a three-day trip to Savannah, Georgia. In Savannah, we toured the aviation company Gulfstream, which is the company that makes my dad's planes. We took a six-hour tour of their company. I went into it thinking I was going to have an awful time and be bored the entire time, but that wasn't the case. We started off our tour with an overview of the company by one of our tour guides. He told us what we were going to see and all about all of their planes. So that leads us to our first stop on the tour, which was a large building where they built the first stage of the plane, or the green plane. The building was separated into five sections. Each section was where they built a different part of the plane. The first part was where they built the nose of the plane, and then each section from there. And then the last part was where they put all the pieces together. Then our next stop was where they painted the planes. While some planes were more simple, like stripes on the side, one had a picture of a young boy on the side with flowers around it. And I don't know about you, but I wouldn't really want my face on the side of a plane that's going to be in the air. Then our next stop was where they built the control panels for the plane. This is where they have all those confusing buttons and switches and handles that no one really knows about except for those real pilots. Then our next stop was where they built the interior, like the chairs, TVs, cabinets, etc. Then our next stop was a lot of fun. I stood in between three 3D screens, I had on 3D goggles, and I was holding an Xbox controller. I used the Xbox controller to simulate my way around the plane and change the interior to look how I wanted it to look, and I made it look pretty awesome. Then our next stop was where I flew my very first simulator. Now, I don't know about you, but I think this simulator looks pretty realistic. It has all the buttons and controls, and the visuals make it seem like you're in an actual plane. Although the simulator didn't really move, it was a lot to take in for my very first try. The uh, the auto brakes do not work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After my amazing first day in Georgia, my second day was even better. My dad and I went to Flight Safety, which was also in Savannah. We took a tour of the building, which was about an hour long, and then I got to fly the most amazing simulator ever. Now, not only did this simulator have the amazing visuals and all the confusing controls, but it also moved, which really made you feel like you were an actual plane. Now, in this simulator, our flight instructor could choose the different conditions that we would fly around in. We flew around during the daytime, at night, once in the fog, and I also flew around once and I lost an engine. <laughs> now, during the daytime and at night, I went a little off the runway, but I stopped before we fell in the water. Then, in the foggy weather, I managed to stay on the runway and stop in the perfect spot. Thanks, Dad. Then we went up one last time, and this time I lost an engine. Now, when I lost my right engine, the plane went completely in the opposite direction. And I'm not that strong, so it took a lot in me to turn the plane the completely other way. But luckily, I had my dad there to help me. After my first amazing day in Savannah, I went into it thinking I was going to have an awful time with a completely low standard but I left wishing I didn't have to. I've had so many unique and once-in-a-lifetime experiences with this project, and I've been so lucky. And in later this month, I will be flying my very first plane. And I'm terrified, but I can't let that stop me, because all of the work that I've done so far will just go to waste. 
Now, I don't know about you, but when I get an opportunity to pursue my dreams or try something new, I have to take it. And that's what I'm doing here. Now, the number one thing I've taken out of this project is that no matter how young or inexperienced you are, you should always try something new. And you never know, maybe one day your little four-year-old self that was jumping off the back of the couch will actually get their chance to fly. Thank you.